Hello to everybody. My name is Alon Vald. I'm speaking to you from the top of Ammunition Hill uh, that uh, lies 1,000 meters from the old city of Jerusalem to the north in Jerusalem in Israel. Thanks to the Corona ordeal, this is the best way I can bring Jerusalem to your best understanding, to your hearts, to make a bond, to make a link, to make you understand what happened in Jerusalem about 53 years ago. We are going to celebrate the reunification of Jerusalem in a very peculiar, weird, different way this year because of the corona. And we'll try to do it thanks to the Zoom and the internet in the most vivid and interesting way. Uh, Ammunition Hill. It commemorates one of the toughest, most difficult battles the paratroopers of the IDF ever conducted in the past 72 years of our existence. And you need to understand that the story I'm going to reveal to you that will start with a broader perspective and it will result eventually at the story of my family, of my own dear father who fell here 53 years ago, is really a very, very interesting story. And today, I'm not going to talk to you about sacrifice and about death and about the battlefield whereabout of Ammunition Hill. I'm going to talk to you about values, about the widest common denominator that we share from the both sides of the globe. 53 years ago, something happened, a six-day war. It is a very famous war and we keep on talking about it. You need to understand that we are talking about something that not even one nation in the modern era could achieve. Within six days, Israel nation collided against four Arab armies and against all odds, came out victorious. In this hill, the paratroopers made the pivotal battle that they led the entire nation to reunite with the Holy Mountain, with the Western world, with the Jewish quarters. And I'm going to share some of the stories with you. When you come to Israel, you can see the IDF soldiers all over the streets of Israel wearing uniforms. They are indeed one of the best armies in the world, but they are not enough to collide against four Arab armies. Whenever a full-scale war falls on our heads, we need to summon the reservists. 80% of the fighting units are the reservists. Who are they? Carpenters, grocery shop owners, lecturers, fresh grooms, rabbis, students who have to make time and again when the army needs them, when the nation needs them. This shifting their mind, when this knock on the door is coming, we need you for the greater good. These guys have to go and leave their families, their careers, their wives, their newborn sons. One of them was my father, Captain Rami Vald, the late Captain Rami Vald. He was a carpenter. He was 32 years old. And I'm going to talk to you today about a lifetime of me trying to understand the minute my father had to leave me. I asked myself, where did he bring all these values? Comradery, commitment to a mission, loyalty, creativity, brotherhood. Does it come with the ranks? Does it come with the uniforms? Until today, we have here 300 meters of trenches and 40 bunkers, well preserved, intact, exactly as they were 53 years ago. When 120 paratroopers stormed to this hill against the 120 Jordanian soldiers from the elite commander units of King Hussein. Israel nation was now facing three fronts, Golan Heights against the Syrians, Sinai Peninsula against the Egyptians, and the long, long border against the Jordanians when the peak of the efforts was Jerusalem. The paratroopers has no, had no intelligence, uh, no maps. They did not know that the people that are waiting for them are that experienced. They knew these trenches like the palm of their hands. Nevertheless, four and a half hours, 5th of June, 1967, they came out victorious against all odds. You guys, this is my childhood playground. I was running here in the trenches at the age of five, six, seven, eight, without understanding what does the notion of the words like war, Jerusalem, Zionism, death, the notion of the word father? I lost my own dear father over here. Uh, I did not know my father. I was 10 months when he had to leave me and my mother. Any war, any big war, any triumph eventually is being done, achieved by the person, by the human being. And I can tell you that the liberators of Jerusalem we are going to relate to today were not gods upon earth. They were afraid, they made mistakes. They implemented, uh, implemented the amazing values that we stand for today. The best way to commemorate their deeds is to talk about camaraderie and bravery and leadership of human beings, not of soldiers, because we are a Jewish nation. We worship life and peace and not death and sacrifice. And this is the way we mediate the story today here. I can tell you, 
for hours each meter who jumped on the hand grenade, who lost his life and how. It is important, for, but for this conversation, before the liberation of Jerusalem uh, that we are going to uh, celebrate uh, in a very short while, the importance is to understand the heart of our nation, and this is going to be my focus today. And now I'm going to try to connect the dots, and I'm going to do it through the underground uh, uh, layer of Ammunition Hill. Underneath the trenches and the bunkers, we have the underground bunker of the Jordanians. Now, thanks to the JNF efforts, we have a very, very beautiful, impressive, state-of-the-art modern museum that will help me to tell you the story in the most vivid and creative way. If you are interested, please follow me. Some people say this is the safest place in Jerusalem. We are isolated completely from what's happening outside. And it helps us to bring the visitors to the most intimate uh, resolution to understand what happened in Jerusalem 53 years ago. We are using animations and movies and clips. We are using music. Uh, this is by no means uh, replacing the option for you to come in the future to understand what we are doing here. But to make a long journey of 400 meters and 53 year, years uh, short, uh, we should focus today on one story that starts the museum and ends the museum. The friends of my father, his comrades in arms, two and a half days after the war started, reached the Kotel, the Holy Mountain and the Jewish quarters. And one of the captains carried a flag in his rear pouch. The flag was given to him by a grandmother. She said to him, if you will reach the Holy Mountain and the Kotel, please, this is the flag I preserved all these years for you. Please take it with you. We are now at the, more or less at the end of the museum. It was a short version and nothing, as I told you, can replace of actual being here. But we started with the flag. Three brigades collided against Jerusalem, a, a city in outskirts. And two days after my father was already killed, they reached the Kotel. And this soldier we met at the beginning took the pouch from his rear pouch, the flag, and along with seven of his friends, they created something we should relate to and never forget. They hanged the flag over the Kotel in a reunited Jerusalem. And when he heard that we are building this museum, he came to us and he told us, this is the flag. This is the flag I preserved for so many years. This is the flag this old grandmother gave me when we started the war. Uh, it will be dead with me, please. I'm 80 years old nowadays. Take the flag and put it in a safe position when people will be able to see the Israeli flag, the widest common denominator, symbol of our nation, is here with the handwriting of this guy, Yoram Zamush, who wrote uh, with his own pen, we are the paratroopers, the liberators of Jerusalem are now hanging the flag of the, the Kotel. This is history and we carry on the journey. This Jerusalem garden is actually Harry Trigobov garden and this is a tribute of JNF Australia to the ongoing efforts. Please have a look. As you surely understand, Ammunition Hill is no longer only trenches and bunkers. It's not only a story of death and sacrifice and battlefield whereabout. It is something much wider. Here you can see one of the latest built uh, memorial halls in Israel on the national level. This is once again the sum up of all the questions I, myself, and my brothers and sisters forever, the orphans of Ammunition Hill and the Six Day War, raised all our lives. Who were they? Who was my father as a human being? Three years of gathering artifacts, memories, stories from the families themselves. What you see here are the choosing of the families. Here we relate to the way these guys lived and not to the way they died and fell. We wanted to know and to reveal from the families who were they, where did they come from, how did they live and what is the full uh, extent of their legacy.